Welcome back. We uh, join Mike Eppel. We were having a nice little conversation over the break. Uh, just uh, about his hair. I think you look wonderful, Mike. Just saying. <laughs> What's left of it? No, it's all, it's all good. Let's just, just wear a baseball cap some mornings. No, you're still, doing, you're still doing the home haircuts, right? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's pretty easy to do. It takes all five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you look fine, Mike. You're all good. And don't worry, so we it's, only it's see the front. experimentation. Ah, just don't you turn can't your see the back, so it's fine. It's, it's all good. good. Uh, we're watching some big, all the big tech giants. They are assembling today. It's kind of like the Avengers yeah. of the tech world. <laughs> tech titans assemble. Mm -hmm. uh, except they're doing it virtually. As it turns out, Melanie, uh, good morning. The uh, heads of Amazon.com, Jeff Bezos, uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, uh, Sundar Pichai of uh, Google, and uh, Tim Cook of Apple will all be giving congressional testimony today, a big hearing uh, related to the size of these companies. Do they have a monopoly in their respective uh, fields in technology? The one uh, interesting uh, absentee will be Microsoft. They weren't, weren't called in this case, even though they're one of the world's most valuable companies as well. But uh, in each case, in prepared testimony already released, uh, each of the four executives are saying, no, we've grown through innovation. We are giving customers what they want. And, you know, and they're all facing competition in a way that maybe you don't think about. Amazon, for example, has... Walmart, you know, growing steadily as well in e-commerce. So they can make that argument that, no, they don't have to be broken up, even though Amazon has uh, seen huge gains in the just the past few months. And Jeff Bezos is the world's richest individual uh, with his wealth growing by billions every day, it seems. So it's going to be interesting to see. We're less than 100 days away from a U.S. election, Melanie, and you got to figure the, the uh, con congressional uh, committee members will be giving huge pontifications uh, that will want to be uh, that want to be on the six o'clock news tonight for their various uh, uh, regions in the states right no so a lot doubt. of this is show uh, to some extent no doubt yeah um what we've been watching yesterday quite the show is four hour grilling of the keelberger brothers when it comes to the yeah. we charity and uh, their involvement with the the canada aid program student aid program uh, grant program rather i should say and uh, what's interesting though and it's actually no surprise a lot of companies are now pulling out of their sponsorships with their ties when it comes to the we charity yeah royal bank uh loblaws WestJet's reviewing its relationship with we each of these companies was either giving money or uh, services to we charities for the past number of years telus had uh, had been working with we for example for 20 years or thereabouts so uh, and i'm reading this morning that we is actually suspending some uh, they're basically just putting everything on hold for the time being as uh, they work through this uh, uh, scenario where they've been pulled into this controversy involving the Trudeau government. So you, you wonder at the same time, we're in ostensibly a recession, right? We've gone through very tough times. So companies themselves are reviewing what they're spending money on. So, uh, you know, there's some speculation that uh, companies are using this as an opportunity to cut back and uh, taking advantage of the scenario that we is experiencing. But then you wonder about um, charity chill. You know, mm -hmm. does this have a spillover effect on other charities who might, you know, uh, feel the effects of the negativity surrounding uh, we charities right now? Uh, we are following what's happening with the vaccine developments, more so the technology mm -hmm. behind it and the progression there with the testing. But what we haven't seen just yet is the pricing. And you're following that. Yeah, Moderna out of Massachusetts, one of the early uh, candidates for a company developing uh, COVID-19 vaccine into phase three trials. They're talking about pricing it between $50 to $60 per dose U.S. So you put that into Canadian money, you're looking at around 75 to 80. Uh, population of Canada, 35, 36 million, close to $2 billion. If, for example, the Canadian government bought one dose for every Canadian, right? So we're talking about a lot of money. And that is why we have seen uh, the U.S. government, for example, uh, sign up Pfizer uh, in a $2 billion uh contract to be basically be first in line for a vaccine. Moderna's on the list as well. The Oxford AstraZeneca study has uh, ties to the British government. So governments are, are looking at doing these contracts in advance of what is hoped to be a successful vaccine, but it's going to cost billions for every country out there. And this is just adding to, again, the pandemic costs from a healthcare perspective.
Yeah, it's huge, Mike. Uh, we have run out of time, though, but uh, take yourself and your hair, and we'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.